Diego Opera, back for its 48th season. And tonight, Sasha, is opening night and uh, for an unforgettable opera called Daughter of the Regiment. Meteorologist Dave Scott is live at the Civic Theater with all the excitement. Pretty uh, fun down there, huh, Dave? Yeah, uh, at, this is something to sing about, as Sasha would say. Uh, and you just might hear Sasha sing some opera tonight. But a lot of people are coming to hear Conrad Prebus and Debbie Turner, uh, two stars of the uh, Italian Opera Theater. And of course, uh, this is the Civic Theater here. Take a look, big sign up there, the Daughters of the Regiment. It begins, they begin their 48th season, the San Diego Opera, almost a half a century. And uh, this is really something because uh, tonight included, they have a gala. We're gonna show you some of the pictures later on in the broadcast. But what a night it's turned out to be. Uh, we have some low clouds, and uh, it's going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, this is a, a really a beautiful story, The Daughters of the Regiment. It revolves around World War II and a young girl who was protected by an American Army regiment in France uh, towards the end of the war. And it really has an all-star cast. And uh, the artistic director is uh, legendary Ian Campbell. So this is something that has been in the works and a lot of people are still coming in tonight uh, to take a look at the, and for the brand new opening season of the San Diego Opera. The San Diego Opera opens its season Saturday night with one you may not have heard of, but you'll never forget once you've seen it, The Daughter of the Regiment. It's one of the great comic operas. People laugh, they have fun. And when I plan a season, it's not only to get the opera that works, but to do an opera that brings in the best singers. And I think what we have here is a combination of a very funny opera, a great way to launch a season, and some remarkable singing from all of the cast. The story revolves around a young girl who was protected by an American Army regiment in France at the end of World War II. My regiment has found and adopted an orphaned uh, young girl and raised her to be our own. She is the titular daughter of the regiment. Uh, and in this particular staging, it's been the, the setting has been changed a little bit, it's been updated to World War II. And so we are actually in an American regiment who has adopted this half American uh, orphan. A world-class cast was assembled by the San Diego Opera's general and artistic director, Ian Campbell. San Diego Opera is seen as an international company, so most of our artists you will also hear at the Met, La Scala, Covent Garden. So we're competing with them to get the same artists. A consequence of that is that we're planning three, sometimes four years out. And the contracts for the major singers here were indeed done more than three years ago. And we just do it in faith. We trust we'll have the money to pay them when we get there. And if we don't plan that far ahead, we simply can't get people of the quality that the audience deserves and we want to have on our stage. Antonio is, is a pretty simple character. He's very straightforward. He knows his intentions from the beginning. And he, um, there's, no, you know, there's no mystery to his character, which makes it a lot easier to play because you, don't have, you, can, you have to show different emotions, but you don't have to show you know, an arc in, your, in, in the way that your character evolves. I enjoy play, playing him because it's a great sing. You know, a lot of great tenors have sung this role and made many scenes famous, especially the first and last aria. Daughter of the Regiment was written by the Italian composer Donizetti in French. But if you've never been to the opera and think you won't understand it, don't worry. The words are in English right above the stage. Boiling it down to just one word, fun. There's a cultural reference to the sort of studio movies of the 30s, 40s, and 50s uh, that you see sort of running throughout the show. I think it's gonna be uh, very fun for the audience. This is a great first opera. I mean, it's a lot of fun. You don't really have to read the subtitles to find out what's going on on stage all the time because the acting and the, and the way the characters are, they can just show you what they're doing. And you, so you can just sit there, watch it, and not have to worry about looking up the entire time and just enjoy the music. Daughter of the Regiment opens Saturday night at the Civic Theater downtown. And if you can't see it Saturday, it plays again on January 29th as well as February 1st and 3rd. Tickets are available at the opera's website, sdopera.com. KUSI meteorologist Dave Scott joins us live at the San Diego Opera now with more on the weather, the gorgeous weather, and of course, a gorgeous new show, Samson and Delilah. Hi, Dave. Oh, and you know, well, we all know the story of Samson and Delilah, right? 
Samson had long hair and all this strength, and then he met up with a woman, uh, femme fatale, if you will, and uh, the rest is history. We're going to find out a little bit about this incredible opera and a little bit about the history of the opera and the future as we go forward the rest of the season. But first tonight, I really want to take you outdoors. I really want to show you and make you understand. If I could sing, that would have to be, it was a beautiful day. A lot of sunshine today. It really was warm and it was beautiful. Take a look at current conditions at Lindbergh Field. I'm John and Sasha and everybody at home right now. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the director of the San Diego Opera, Ian Campbell. Thank you so much. You should have sung, oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm going to let you do it. Uh, you actually, start, that's how you started out as an opera singer. I began as an opera singer 46 years ago, believe it or not, with the Australian Opera. But I went into management after the opening of the Sydney Opera House, and I enjoy what I do very much. And the people of San Diego enjoy what you do very much, which is why you've been here not 10, not 20, but 30 years. <laughs> Ian, you've seen a lot of changes over, over the years. Kind of put in perspective the growth of San Diego Opera especially compared to the world stage. We're talking the Met, which you worked at, Australia, Sydney Opera House, which you uh, saw the opening of. How do we compare in San Diego? In terms of standards, we compare very well because we attract many of the best singers in the world. The singers on the stage tonight are also heard in Vienna, Paris, Covent Garden, La Scala, the Met, of course. But they come to San Diego, which is uh, a wonderful tribute to our audiences and also the city. They come knowing that they're going to be well looked after. They know that they're going to have great colleagues on the stage. So the quality of this company is definitely comparable. What about the quality of this show? Samson and Delilah, it's the second in the series. I guess there are five, maybe a half dozen, but uh, the second in the series. Uh, Samson, what can we uh, hear and see in this particular production? Well, you're going to hear a very large chorus to begin with, more than 80 people and we have a large group of soloists, we have supers, we have a ballet. In fact, 265 people are being paid tonight to be in Samson and Delilah. It's just a crazy number of people. John and Sasha, did you catch that number there? Yeah, we How sure did. How many people are, it takes to, to, <laughs> to put on a show? That's so the 260, it's, it's, it's not like Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney in that thing. Come on, gang, let's put on a exactly. show. You've got 265. And they all get paid by the performance. There are no economies of repetition either. But the quality of the singing is first rate. It's a large scale production, of course. We have to have sandals and sand and desert. It's all there. And the sets are huge. So it's grand opera in the grand manner. And you're a grand, grand director. Thank you very much, Ian Campbell. Okay, now Ian's going to join me a little later on, and we're going to talk about what new things they've done. They've done some very special things that are different, and then we'll talk about the future of opera in San Diego and the next few shows ahead. The San Diego Opera is pulling out all the stops with its upcoming production of Samson and Delilah. The biblical tale was set to music 136 years ago, but is as powerful today as ever. Samson is a judge of the Philistines, flawed human being like all of us. Kind of likes to enforce the rules but not play by them. Clifton Forbes plays Samson, the Hebrew leader who succumbs to Delilah's charms. European opera sensation Nadia Kresteva plays the sultry Delilah. Delilah is a good-looking woman uh, who is uh, vain and who is in love in Samson, but she's all the time fighting with her feelings, like loving him and hating him at the same time. The high priest is played by Anusha Golasorki, who studied in San Diego and spent countless hours surfing our beaches. I played a high priest of Dagon, who was uh, the say, spiritual and political head of the uh, Palestines and uh, Philistines in this opera. He is being challenged by Samson and Jehovah, for dominion over this land of his, over this religion, and so I use everything in my power, including Dalila, to try to bring Samson to his knees. If you've never been to an opera before, Samson and Delilah would be a wonderful introduction. It's a great first opera. You've got ballet, you've got everything that is grand opera is in this show. It's perfect first opera for everybody to come and see. It's so wonderful music and the story is stunning, uh, beautiful, 
uh, set, beautiful cast, but beautiful costumes. Samson and Delilah opens Saturday night with additional performances February 19th, 22nd, and 24th. For more information, go to sandiegoopera.com. I'm Bridget Naso for KUSI News. But now the music, instead of Irish, it is definitely a Latin flavor. That is uh, Mariachi Juvenil Azteca that is taking the stage right now, and it's all uh, sort of a prelude, if you will, to the wonderful San Diego Opera, uh, which will be taking place tonight. Actually has a Latin flavor as well. Cruzer La Cruz de la Luna, To Cross the Face of the Moon is the name of the play, and it actually features some mariachi performances. So uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to come on out. In just a little while, we're going to be speaking with the director of Mariachi Garibaldi, Mr. Jeff Nevin. But right now, let's talk weather. Of course, uh, San Diego Opera in full swing this season. Uh, mariachi Garibaldi, Jeff Nevin. Jeff, thank you very much for thank being you. here. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's really a pleasure to be here. I, first of all, uh, I know you do a lot of performances and teaching out at uh, Southwestern College, but your mariachi group is now, I have to say, an international deal. <laughs> yeah, we um, have just been very fortunate at the college. We have almost 100 mariachi students. There are four different mariachi classes, and the top group is really outstanding. We've been invited to China. We've been invited to Russia. We, we went to Russia twice, actually, so we just got back about three months ago, and uh, we were in Europe last summer, and we go to Guadalajara every year, and there's a big mariachi festival down there so we're actually fairly well known down in Guadalajara um, that we go and people start asking for the songs that we do hey I know you guys I want you to sing this song too okay. Jeff let's get this is our cam uh, cameraman Bennett How you doing? How you doing, man? and <laughs> right now explain what's happening on the stage here because you know you have the San Diego Opera tonight but you have a lot of performances going on sure well the um, the, the reason for it for all of this is the San Diego Opera is presenting an um, opera called Cruzar la Cara de la Luna um, which is by Pepe Martinez, the director of Maniachi Vargas at the Caliclan, the best Maniachi in the world. And this is the first opera that has as its score a Maniachi band. So there's no orchestra, it's the, the orchestra is a Maniachi. And so the opera is presenting this, and in order to promote it and just to kind of get everyone in the mood, um, the opera organized what they're calling Mariachi Week. So all week long, um, I'm sure we had other performances on your station, I think, earlier in the week. Um, but all week long, there have been different student mariachis from all the different schools going out into the community to perform. So I know they played at the SeaWorld, they played down in, in the different malls, and right now they've had mariachis performing all day outside the opera, getting people warmed up for the, for the show. Jeff Nevin, thank you very much, my friend. My it is always good to see you, and everything. best of luck to Mariachi Garibaldi. Check him out if you can. We'll talk more about the San Diego Opera, the performances, and your full weather forecast, plus your KUSI Supercast, coming up a little later on. Right now, back to you. In the midst of a season of classics, ranging from Samson and Delilah to Aida, the San Diego Opera is bringing something completely different to the Civic Theater this weekend. Cruzar la Cara de la Luna is the first mariachi opera, and in the opera it is about a man named Laurentino, and I play his granddaughter, his American-born granddaughter. Cruzar la Cara de la Luna brings together three generations of families steeped in the mariachi music of its native Mexico, but now firmly rooted in the United States. Cruzar la Cara de la Luna is about uh, a story about family, about home, we talk about home and what home means to everyone. It's a story of a woman that believes in the concept of family and supporting her husband no matter what, but she has to pay the consequences of that. This relatively new opera features the world-renowned Mariachi Vargas de Tecalitlan and a colorful variety of Latin song and dance. So listening to Mariachi Vargas is just it, the first time we were with them, I just had goosebumps and it was like amazing. So that is my absolute favorite thing, just listening to them do their thing. The music is full of energy and it's full of passion, just like mariachi music is. It's full of all those feelings that we also transmit with the opera. Cruzar looks at the drama and joy of family that is universal in its theme. This is a piece that really, it can connect with anyone. It, an opera fan, a non-opera fan, a mariachi fan. It has something that everyone can connect with on some level. It would be the best introduction to opera for everyone, for kids, for adults. It's so easy to understand. You have to come see it. 
San Diegans will have two opportunities to enjoy Cruzar la Cara de la Luna Saturday afternoon and evening. Tickets can be purchased at the Opera website sdopera.com. Blue about as far as uh, this weather, and it may be an Easter weekend, but a lot of people are celebrating by heading to the opera. The San Diego Opera, and that is where we find KUSI meteorologist Dave Scott tonight. Actually, maybe even behind the scenes. <laughs> Dave? Well, I got to tell you this, uh, John and Sasha, they, can, they could, if they wanted to here at the San Diego Opera, they could actually create the weather. Because if you look up, I don't know how high we can point the camera, but it's about four or five stories up there cables and wires and lights and curtains and it is just incredible the show that they're putting on tonight is called murder in the cathedrals one of the shortest plays that they'll have here at the san diego opera and they're almost at the conclusion of the season so if you get a chance to come on out you've got to do it and coming up in just a moment i'm going to give you your weather forecast but this place is absolutely incredible when you walk around here everybody's all the crew is back here making sure they're getting ready. There's a lot of notes that have to be taken and all the props have to be put in place. And a lot of people working very hard to make sure that this play goes off very nicely. Okay. And then you are going to be amazed to not only meet but to listen to our next guest. That's coming up at just a moment. Let's talk weather because if they wanted to, if you just take a look up, up there, you see the lights four or five stories up and all the cables and all the curtains. Take a look at current conditions at Lindbergh Field right now. It's been a man with one of the most beautiful voices in all of the world. And I'm just going to sit here as we introduce Ferruccio Furlanetto. Sir. You know, this is one of the few interviews I can do from a distance because your voice is absolutely marvelous. Welcome. Talk about your role tonight. You have the lead role of Thomas Beckett in Murder in the Cathedral. And give us an idea as to who is your character. Stunning character, stunning opera, and I am very, very much is an amazing personality. I mean, it has been, and it is subject for theater, it has been subject for movies. We remember Richard Burton in one of these. And, uh, and, they, and they have you all made up in a, in a little ways. Well, when you yes. This is the more or less the way I like to present myself. This is my third production in this, in this opera, and I always use the same, the same wig and in fact, let me have you come down the stairs Certainly. as you would, because this is not just uh, behind the scenes here. I'll have you sit here, Ferruccio. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, but this is your cathedral, because Thomas Beckett was actually a priest. Thomas, Thomas Beckett, well, before being a priest, Thomas Beckett was a chancellor of Henry II. He was a, a very cunning and well-prepared politician. And then he decided also with the permission of the king to be priest because the king thought that to have an archbishop, and he became archbishop very, very fast, to have an archbishop of, on his part, it would, be, it would have been much easier to handle the, the situation with the Pope and the Vatican, which didn't happen at all because Beckett, when he became priest, an archbishop, this, of course, felt that the power of God was coming before. Well, the power of this show is going to be something, and I hope you get a chance to see it tonight. When we come back, we're going to chat with you further, and perhaps you can end on a beautiful... Because, by the way, you know, when he's, just when he speaks, it sounds like music. You guys, we're going to have more of that when we come back. It hasn't been seen on stage in the U.S. since it was written more than a half a century ago. KUSI's Leslie Lopez shows us why San Diego Opera's next performance, Murder in the Cathedral, is being resurrected. The San Diego Opera's next production is the true story of 12th century Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Beckett, Murder in the Cathedral. It's a very easy story and very straightforward. It's about Thomas Beckett, his arguments with the king, and we're at the time when Beckett has come back from France after an absence of seven years, and he's in the cathedral, he knows that he's in danger, 
He knows he's likely to be killed and he's tempted by four uh, tempters in his mind. They're not real people and they offer him the chance to restore things with the king, to go back to being chancellor, to raising an army to defeat the king and finally the last one says become a martyr because kings don't live forever whereas martyrs do. Opera fans from all over the country are coming to San Diego for the U.S. debut of a story based on the T.S. Eliot play. This is a great experience for an opera. First of all, we've got one of opera's great stars in Ferruccio Ferlinetto singing a role that is very dear to him. Uh, dramatically, it's a very interesting story. It's got a backbone of history to it, a true historical reference. Uh, wonderful orchestration, rem reminiscent of Debussy and Puccini. And again, uh, the choral writing is just ingenious. No detail was left to chance for a San Diego opera team that put years of preparation into making this one production. One of the things I did was I went to Canterbury and photographed the windows, uh, and that's one of the windows. Very high up in the cathedral, and I had to, it was quite a job to get a good angle. I was very fortunate to actually find uh, existing pieces that were worn by Thomas Beckett in 12th century. So this was clothing uh, that I found in Sans Cathedral um, in uh, France and it was 900 years old so I got my hands on actual photographs of that and some of the pieces that uh, we're showing on stage are actual replicas uh, of what I found in my research. Director Ian Campbell believes Murder in the Cathedral is a story that will captivate the audience. It's always fast paced and the singing is great, story is easy to follow and I think people may come away very moved by what happens. It's a very wonderful story, it's a passionate story uh, about a man most of all before a saint. Murder in the Cathedral opens Saturday night at the Civic Theatre downtown. Tickets are still available at sdopera.com. Leslie Lopez, KUSI News. Beautiful weather to enjoy the very last opera in the season of the San Diego Opera. And by the way, right here inside uh, the Civic Theater, it is going to be packed. And if you think that the, uh, the, all the people coming in are going to pack the place, wait till you see the stage tonight. It's, it contains not just a cast, but an army will be taking the stage. One of the biggest casts you could imagine in theater, and especially San Diego Opera tonight. Now we're gonna be talking with Ian Campbell in just a little while, but beautiful weather here in San Diego. Well, joining me now is Ian Campbell. And of course, he is the uh, director out here and the San Diego Opera for many, many years. He's seen all kinds of different shows, and this particular one, Aida, it's not just a cast, it is a cast and a half, an army. It is an army. There's going to be about 360 people involved in the production tonight, and of those, something like 180 are on stage among the chorus, the uh, stagehands will be appearing now and then, the soloists, and the supers. The supers are the so-called spear carriers. We have a lot of them as well. Take a look at this. I mean, look at the, it's, it's pageantry at its best. It's colorful, it's dynamic, and it's packed. Yes, it's what people refer to as grand opera, and this is grand. It's just marvelous. And with Zandra Rhodes' designs, the color scheme is incredible. It leaps off the stage. And of course, it's one of the greatest stories in all opera. Wonderful to hear, wonderful to see. And uh, fortunately, there's a few tickets left on Tuesday, but people had better hurry up. You know, you know what, no matter what the story is, it always involves a man and a woman in opera, doesn't it? Well, that's what life's about. It's about love, love triangles, murder, death. So we've got it all involved in this. And uh, there are, in fact, three deaths in the opera, so audiences will love it. Typical opera. Yeah, and with that many people on stage, I mean, there's something going on from start to finish. There is, and of course, Zanderoe's designs are colorful. The lighting lifts them off the stage. The music is great, Verdi. What more do you need? Zandra Rhodes, because we're going to meet her in a little while, Ian. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of the help. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And we'll see you next season. And we're going to meet when we come back. Even as Campbell was talking about Zandra Rhodes designing the colors, the pageantry, and everything. You're going to meet her when we come back. So stick around. Plus, we'll have your KUSI Supercast, Have a Day Outlook, and a whole lot more. Back to you. All right, thanks, David. Sasha, the Sounds outfits great. and the costumes are just ornate. Huh? Yeah, I saw a dress rehearsal of the opera oh, the know. other day, oh. and it was oh. breathtaking.
The final show in San Diego Opera's brilliant 2013 season is a classic, Giuseppe Verde's Aida. The story of Aida is about an Ethiopian slave, uh, Aida, who is actually uh, a princess, Ethiopian princess, and she's in the service of Amneris, the, um, the Egyptian princess. They both love the same man, an Egyptian soldier, Radamais. In addition to its love story, Aida is a spectacle with some of the most elaborate sets and costumes in all of opera. Lots of people, about 200 on the stage, very colorful, wonderful music and instruments which are usually not even seen in other operas. Aida also stages beautiful ballet sequences choreographed by Kenneth von Heidecke. Most people know that the Paris Opera would never even consider doing an opera if it didn't have a ballet in the second or third act. And uh, so it became a style of grand opera, especially Aida, which is both grand opera and opera exotica. The ballet sequences are integrally so important. You may have seen the Aida story presented on the Broadway stage, but until you've seen the opera, you haven't really seen Aida at all. Broadway musicals are very exciting. There's no question, musicals anywhere are very exciting. I grew up on musicals and I love them. But there's nothing like being in the opera house and rarely hearing that sized orchestra and those sized voices singing this sort of music. Not only is Aida a favorite among opera lovers everywhere, it's one that's easy to understand and a perfect opera introduction for San Diegans young and old. This is the perfect first opera for anyone. You know, it's got everything. It's got all the colors, the fantastic scenery and sets by Zandra Rhodes. It's got exciting stage direction from Andrew Sinclair. It's got wonderful visual sequences that are also balletic, so it's, it's got everything. Aida opens Saturday at the Civic Theater downtown and runs through April 28th. Tickets and more information are available at sdopera.com.